All right, Chet. <laughs> Great performance in the first half against Wimby the other night. Uh, I watched that first half. Actually, I watched the whole game, but the first half, I was just like, this is awesome. I am so excited about the next 10 to 15 years of NBA basketball. Um, what what has sort of popped for you guys? And I know he he played some in summer league as well. Um, but what is pop for you guys uh, with Chet Holmgren? I think because of him playing in summer league and getting to see him a little bit, what popped for me immediately, especially in that uh, in the San Antonio game, the handle seems tighter. And I think that's big for me because when I first saw him, you could see the elements of, okay, okay, so you may use him as a hub sometimes. Pick and pop guy that can shoot, but also attack off the bounce. But the dribble was so high and loose that – it felt like once every five drives may be successful, but the other four, someone's digging down, he's bobbling it, maybe a turnover, or it just kind of halts the half court play. He looks so controlled as a driver against San Antonio. And if that has tightened up that quickly with a summer of work, he's going to be terrified. Like, I don't know what you do with him because he can shoot, because he can't, he embraces physicality in a way that you may think doesn't happen because of his frame. You add in the fact that he can just get to his spots now and rise up over the top with the wingspan and touch that he has. He's just going to be really fun offensively, and I think the defense speaks for itself. Uh, the the drives for me from Chet, I, and I like how he can, he can get to them in different ways, whether he's spaced and they're operating, whether he's a trail big, whether it's a pick, pick and pop and he's attacking a closeout. Uh, just the mindset that he has. Nakias mentioned the control, but, hey, I'm going to drive. I'm going to take my time. I see the help. I'm moving away from the help. I'm hitting on these drives and initiating contact and delivering the blow. That's where maybe that extra year may have helped him strength-wise. And I think that's just also a big key for Oklahoma Oklahoma City. This is a team that's going to drive the basketball. And for him to be someone who can space, who can roll, but fits in with how they want to play, because it's not just going to be Shea, it's going to be Giddy, it's going to be Jalen Williams, Lou Dort. When that ball starts moving and they keep driving – that's huge. And if he becomes someone who's not just a pick and roll guy or a I have to be spaced or involved in a handoff guy, he can impact that way. I think that's just a big key for Chet and Oklahoma City. I think the fit just really works right now. And then I think I would like for him to to set some screens, but I'll delay that because I think he has a little bit more potential to have a little bit more of an impact in that game. But I've liked what I've seen so far. Yeah, you guys touched on the driving, and this was a team last year with Shea and, and Josh Giddy, who were at the top of the league uh, in terms of drives per game. They're going to attack the paint. They get into their drive and kick game, all of them. You know, you see that swing, swing to a drive, to a closeout, to a drive, to a closeout, open three, right? And to me, and I want to talk about the ceiling for this Oklahoma City team in a second, I'll just say this. To me, the, 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 the ceiling for this team ultimately becomes dependent upon marginal improvement from shooters whether that is Shea or Josh Giddy, but specifically with Chet I think he adds a layer to their offense if he all of a sudden he doesn't even have to be 45 percent you know high 30s where he's taking four or five threes a game that to me is uh such a bonus for this offense one thing that has stood out well, actually two things have stood out uh with Chet uh the offensive rebounding in that San Antonio game I I think that uh, is something that if they're not a great shooting team, if they don't have this marginal improvement, that's extra possessions. That helps improve their offense. If he's crashing the glass, his length is is just insane. And so him as an offensive rebounder uh, gets me excited. Uh, the other thing, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm gonna try to say this without getting myself into trouble. I'm going to say this in a nice way. And, and Chet, I, I, I mean this as a compliment. Um, what has really stood out because he, he's been on a couple podcasts recently. Uh, I've seen some interviews he's done with the media and I've watched him now a couple times in preseason. And I would just say this, Chet Holmgren, you, you may call it playing with a competitive edge. I would say he's an asshole. And I mean that in the most positive way. Like <laughs> he's got some shit to him. And I love that. I that 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 to me like first of all you're hyped right you're coming out of high school you're a hype prospect all that stuff go to Gonzaga like I watched that Duke game I remember uh, against uh, Paolo like he is an asshole on the court and that to me gives me hope that he ultimately turns out to be an all NBA player um 
I've loved, like you guys talk about the drives, the way that he's initiated contact, uh, you know, with the, with the pull throughs, uh, he got Zach, tw- Zach Collins twice on that. Um, like there, there's a, there's a competitive edge that he plays with that I think when you think about like Giddy, you know, uh, uh, Shay, uh, like uh, fairly mild mannered guys. And then you have like Kenrich Williams, Lou Dort, Chet Holmgren. <laughs> like th- these guys are going to be, these guys are going to be tough to play against in the regular season and, and, and potentially in the playoffs. Um, so going back to that question about ceiling for both of you guys, the ceiling for this team, and we've talked about the Western conference and we're going to talk about the Western conference throughout the season. Uh, the ceiling for this team what is it dependent upon? And in a best case scenario for the regular season, how high do you do you see these guys finishing the Western Conference? Um, I think just to bounce off of what you said, I do think it's going to be the shooting. And I think Chet's presence as a shooter and then on the other end, just having a traditional run protector, I think is going to do a lot for this OKC group. They were, I think, 13th in defensive rating. They were hovering in the top 10 for most of the year. I think having someone with legitimate size that, you know, to everyone's point, to this point of the discussion, the way that Chet embraces contact, like even with some of the post-ups that he's faced through summer league and in preseason so far, you may move him off the spot, but you're not moving him out of the way. And you still have to deal with his length and his timing as a shot blocker. And so having someone that can close out more possessions that way, get OKC in transition even more, which should unlock more of the drives, some cleaner catch and shoot opportunities. Like, I think you just see a big boom for them uh, as long as he stays healthy. So I think it's going to be the shooting first and foremost, uh, which is where, if we're talking in terms of regular season value, like I do wonder, like how much of a role is Dave, Davis Bertans going to play for this OKC group as a small ball five? We saw what Mike Muscala could do with this group uh, for multiple years now. Uh, obviously not there anymore. So like they may get some value out of him as a spacer as well. As far as ceiling, like frankly, I think they could be a home court team this yeah. year. Yeah, they, be. I like that. I like that. Uh, mine is it's based on for me defense. They've been a solid defense. They've been an active defense. Are they going to be able to defend night in, night out? Because their expectations around the league are going to be different. They're probably going to be treated a little bit differently this year. It's very tough to surprise the league again. So how do they handle teams respecting them a little bit more? Game plan defense for Shea? Are there more doubles? Defensively, now that there's pressure on and the teams are attacking you, can you hold that up over a course of a season uh, to where you're converting that into wins? I think probably top six for me is where I would go okay. just because of the way that they play offensively and the culture that they've built as far as we do this every single night and you have to deal with it. That's an excellent regular season formula. I just know that West is going to be tough yeah. and it's not like the East is a bunch of like mm-hmm. slouches either. So I, I do think there's a moment of they're not quite the hunted, but I don't know if they're just the lone hunter anymore. That's fair. And I do appreciate Nikaias actually going out on a limb and providing a take there, um, saying a home court versus top six. I mean, you make an argument the, the top 12 could all be the top six. So thanks, Steve, for the obvious here. Um, 